Despite being the most famous personality of the Spanish Armada, Sir Francis Drake was not actually in command of the English fleet. He was second in command. He was a fine sailor, explorer, and terrified the Spanish, who gave him the name El Draco, the Dragon. The man actually in command of the fleet was Lord Charles Howard of Effingham, the Queen's cousin. He was an experienced sailor and successful leader of the English fleet. He was to prove effective in combining a small royal fleet and several individual ships at the same time as receiving minimal supplies from the Queen and her council. It may seem a small difference, but the Armada was sent against England and not Britain. This was not Great Britain that the Armada came up against. England was a relatively weak and divided country. Ireland was under the control of England, but predominantly Catholic, so no help could be expected from that quarter. And Scotland had been a dangerous enemy for several centuries. In fact, after the major battles in the Channel and the North Sea were over, the English still feared the Armada would land in Scotland or Ireland and cause real problems for the Tudor state. Despite the impressive size of the Armada, and no matter how much we believe it, England was not Spain's greatest enemy at the time. King Philip II's biggest problem was the Dutch Protestant rebels in the Netherlands. The Duke of Parma had been waging war against the Protestant Dutch for some time, and had enough problems without having to free up tens of thousands of men for the invasion of England. When the Spanish Armada first sailed, storms forced them back into the port of Corona. The leader of the Armada, the Duke of Medina Sidonia, was so disheartened and seasick, he messaged King Philip II that he thought the enterprise was doomed. Philip II, impatient with so many delays and the mounting costs, he roared back, I have dedicated this enterprise to God. Get on with it. The tens of thousands of soldiers on board the Armada were not actually the main invading force for England. The Armada was to link up with the experienced and powerful army of Alexander Farnese, Duke of Parma in the Netherlands. The soldiers, in fact, were not even used as a fighting force during the campaign, as the English did not grapple with the Spanish ships. So all the soldiers achieved was to get in the way of the sailors, trying to man the sails and work the guns. And perhaps later on, when they were desperately trying to get home, all those extra soldiers would use up valuable drinking water on the long, unexpected route around Scotland on their way back home. We're halfway through part one of our amazing facts of the Spanish Armada. It would be really appreciated if you could hit that like and subscribe button. For small content creators like us, it really does mean the world. Thank you. We have time to finish the game and to beat the Spanish too. This mythical quote from Drake whilst playing bowls on Plymouth Hoe has no solid evidence to back it up. As stated in our first fact, Drake was not in command of the fleet, and so this vital message of the Spanish being sighted should have gone to Howard and not Drake. If the quote is true, and Drake was in such a relaxed mood about the Spanish, it was because he knew the wind and tide were against the fleet stuck in Plymouth Harbour. If they had wanted to get out, they would have had to warp each individual warship by towing them from the ship's boats. No thank you. The English should not have been in Plymouth at all. They should have been at sea searching for the Spanish. But the weather that had brought the Spanish Armada into the English Channel was the same weather that had forced the English back into harbour. Drake's raid on Cadiz in 1587, the singeing of the King of Spain's beard, did a huge amount of damage. He destroyed ships, storehouses, burnt stores, and very importantly, barrel staves. During the 16th century, so much was stored and transported in barrels 
that destroying the staves was a huge factor in the armada being delayed, and ensured that the supplies during the campaign spoiled earlier than they normally would. Whilst trapped in Plymouth, the English were vulnerable to attack and even fire ships. Medina Sidonia's second in command, Recalde, urged Medina Sidonia to attack, but Medina Sidonia stuck to his orders from Philip II. His orders were to avoid battle where possible and link up with Parma as soon as he could. If Medina Sidonia had attacked the stuck English fleet in Plymouth with fire ships, could he have changed England's history forever? When the English fleet finally came out of Plymouth, they surprised the Spanish by not attempting to block their progress. Instead, they tacked to get behind the Spanish. Tacking means sailing across the wind in a zigzag fashion to get from point A to point B. Getting behind the Spanish meant that they had gained the weather gauge, which meant they could decide when and where they attacked the Spanish. <laughs> 